G'day everyone, Skavig here, and Atlas have introduced a new roadmap, and so after quite a long time of not really having anything to update about the game, we have something to talk about. Now this roadmap isn't for the end of Early Access, this is specifically for Season 10, the current season that we're in, albeit that there's probably not that many seasons before the end of Early Access anyway. Uh, they do put a little bit of fluff text at the start to basically say that they understand there's frustration around the constant focus on introducing new content. Now I have discussed that in the past across many things. Uh, that is their plan. They are planning on introducing all new content first, regardless of the fact that it may be buggy and broken. Uh, they're going to get it all in there and then once they've actually got it in, all of the teams that they have will move on to bug fixes and optimization. Uh, as much as that's not what people want, that is the way that the business has chosen to go. Um, and yeah, <laughs> that's the way that it is. So with the roadmap, this can actually be broken down into four categories. The sea activity, the trading system, the team utilization and single player, which is a rare one to see on any roadmap so far. The single player seems to have been left alone for quite some time. Anyway, we'll start off with the sea activity. We're looking at floating operating bases, factions and modular ship improvements. Now, with the floating operating bases, with an acronym of a FOB, these appear to be like the ARC C platforms, as they have a, a large hollow center, so it's kind of like a, a ringed square, uh, and it has snap points for sea docks, sea dock rather than shipyard, but you know, I assume that they're talking about shipyards there, uh, where you can put ships, they talk about ships being docked and protected, so there's potential for the, the, the platform itself actually to protect the ships while they're actually docked. Uh, other than that, you can put structures up to 16 connections away. I assume that's ceiling pieces, or at least ceiling widths. So up to 16 ceiling widths, you can still actually build and place down structures with no weight limit. Uh, otherwise, the, the limitation will be on where you can actually place these things. Uh, companies will be limited to one fob per grid. that must be placed in open ocean and can't be built near things like the trade winds, the portals, islands, or other fobs. Uh, otherwise, things like the Golden Age Kraken and more grids, you can't build them at all. Uh, with that, um, that being said, the whole thing works on a decay system that is different to all the other items. Um, these things just decay. There, There is no way to refresh, or at least there's very limited ways to refresh the counter on them. Uh, from a, um, an island claim versus a lawless claim system, the lawless side of things it just decays in 36 hours, and this is PvP, just keep this in mind. Um, with the island claim grids, you can build the foundation in, say, the peacetime, and then once you've actually declared war, uh, that declaring war will actually extend uh, the timer. And that timer will be extended so that it actually falls in line with the completion of the war declaration. And so it sounds like uh, from a PvP side of things, you'd be able to rock up with your fob, lo lob it down, do your war declaration, and yeah, you've got somewhere to battle from. Uh, in PvE, they are planning on having these. It seems a little bit weird to actually have it in PvE. Uh, it might be something fun for people to use, but it's probably got a very limited application given that it will decay. Uh, initially, it's got a seven decay uh, seven day decay timer, which can be extended by 12 hours for 5,000 gold. Although it says that there's no limit on the number of extensions. So I guess if you're uh, a rich enough player and you can keep getting yourself, it's 10,000 gold a day to keep your uh, floating island up and running. It'll be interesting to see whether anybody actually does that. Um, and as much as this has actually been slated as a way to increase sea activity, I am actually wondering if this will have something to do with the island spam. As if you think about it, you know, people want to be able to get onto the island, build some things, so you get your forward operating base, so that you can actually perform your raid. And so the island owners are going to spam the island with everything to so that they can actually prevent you from doing such a thing. Uh, and by putting the fob out in the water, will that allow them to change the structures uh, or at least the way that structures are built on islands because yeah, you just blanket stop people from being able to build or you create uh, objects which pre have build prevention in them and things like that and uh, you're not actually prevented from being able to do your raids because you've got your floating operating base rather than your forward operating base. I don't really know if that's really how it will actually pan out uh, but yeah the, the way that they're talking about it here is that it's to increase sea activity and so this is obviously hoping to facilitate naval battles.
The other two items here, being the factions and the modular ship improvements, are a lot shorter than the, the FOB. The factions is a way to actually have special faction based rewards and PvE questline progressions specific to we don't know. Um, quite possibly there will be a ship of the damned faction, whether there will be some kind of an industrial faction or an Atlantean faction. We don't actually know what the factions will actually be, but the idea is that there will be quests that you will be able to perform to improve your, uh, I assume, reputation with those factions to be able to get specific rewards. Uh, they had previously said that they would never do this, or at least, I shouldn't say never, they had previously said they were not going to do this because it was too much like an MMO item to put into a sandbox game, but here we are, someone's made the decision to change their mind on that one and we're going to get factions. Uh, with the modular ship improvements, there's not much to say here other than the fact that it has been said before, the modular ships, uh, even they don't like the way the current modular ships are. Uh, they've got new artwork and they've got new code for how the sails will work. However, they're not going to do any major changes mid-season. So I suspect that the modular ship improvements, we won't see that until the end of the season when they're doing planning on doing the wipe, if not after the wipe itself. Next, we move on to the trading system. Uh, it's been quite a while since they actually introduced the trading system. And even when they uh, first introduced it, they said that they weren't happy with it. Uh, but it wasn't a high priority to fix, so they've pretty much just let it go up until apparently this point in time. Uh, they're looking at some new improvements, that being a new user interface for the markets, which would be bloody wonderful. The physical trade ships that they always said that were going to be there. So when you actually do a uh, trade, a ship is meant to spawn and actually travel to the place that the trade is actually meant to occur. Uh, and I believe they were even talking about escorts and you know those ships actually being able to be attacked and things like that. So you could actually sail along and protect them while they were actually doing trades and things like that. Uh, there is tame trading. So there's obviously the uh, concept that instead of just resources, we can actually put our teams maybe on these trade ships and trade them to other players. Uh, and of course, the improved sea forts. Now, the Seaford itself has actually already gone through one iteration of uh, an update. And they're talking about making it more integral and engaging. And they were saying that this is a smaller Seaford that they've actually put in, which means that they're going to create larger Seaforts. They even talk here about enemy NPCs, hidden treasures, amongst other things. And I think this sounds bloody wonderful because you know, when I play some other games, things like Rust and whatever else, uh, they have what are called monuments. And those monuments have puzzles, they have interesting things to do. And they're things that can be fought over, they're things that you can do just for fun in PvE. And they basically just all around create content that uh, entices players to do them. And so to have something like that where you've got these sea forts where there's things for people to do or fight over, that sounds like a wonderful thing to be uh, introduced into the game. Uh, and I have to actually uh, see more once I actually jump into the PTR and have a look and see what they have for us when they uh, bring them out. Okay, the next category, tame utilization. Uh, this seems to be around the things like the tame house, the hatcheries, the tame cargo rails that we use currently for transporting things. Uh, apparently they're looking at having a new item being the tame barn. Uh, and this will be, an, unlike the limited capacity of the hatchery in the tame house, uh, this will be purely for the mass storage of creatures. So you won't be able to reproduce, they won't require food, they'll be in stasis and they can live inside the barn. Uh, I like the idea. It's going to be interesting to uh, see how that one works because I'm not even sure how the tame house works currently. If it's destroyed, what do the creatures do? Do they pop out or do they all die? Because um, yeah, if you've got a thousand creatures and they all pop out all at once, it'll have an interesting impact on the server. Uh, other than that, uh, there is the swarm house. So it's a new building which will be used as a passive resource generation but will also tame creatures for you such as bees, ants, bats, rattlesnakes and mini crabs. Uh, and basically these creatures if they're nearby, wild creatures, they'll be drawn to the swarm house, captured and tamed uh, and these creatures won't be rideable or breedable. So it's just, uh, yeah. Obviously, a cre the, the, the building itself has nice stuff, so you can get honey, venom, fertilizer, toxic flora and crustacean meat, but otherwise you can get some mini tames out of it as well, which sounds like a bit of fun, and something maybe a little bit cosmetic. Whether we can actually use them as shoulder pets or not will be an interesting thing, but uh, I doubt that. But it will at least be something interesting for people to do. Uh, other than all of that, there is also the fact that the thing that they want to fix up is the UI for the, the menu, because... 
Yeah. yeah, the radio menu has its place in some ways, but I really think they should just have a page where you can uh, do what you need to do, have a nice looking user interface. Anyway, that's tame utilization. Okay, and the final point, the single player roadmap. Uh, it's been a while since they've put anything specific down on paper regarding single player, mainly because uh, way back, this is probably almost going back a couple of years when these guys came online, um, they said that their sole focus was going to be PvP. They were going to make a PvP game first, and then they would look at all the other things. And then that slowly progressed, and we started seeing a little bit of PvE stuff trickle in to the development. Uh, but they basically said, yeah, we're not going to look at single player at all, because we need to make sure the servers are working before we even look at single player. So it's kind of like the bastard child of everything at the moment, with the uh, single player and the non-dedicated sessions. However, uh, we've actually got some stuff here now, which is uh, good to see. But this is around the maps themselves. So they want to create a way that we can actually access each of the different season maps as a selectable item within the single player interface. And they already have this in Ark, where I can choose to play on the island, I could play on Ragnarok, I could go to the Fjordja map, uh, whether they're actually paid content or free DLCs or mod maps, you know, they all get rolled into the option of the single player interface. And this is basically what they talk about here. They're possibly looking at free DLCs as a way of managing each map to be uh, something that you can choose. And so if you wanted to, I know there's a lot of people that love the Season 3 map, you can always load it up and go and play it single player. Uh, albeit that uh, all the people who want Season 3 back are people that are actually playing on PvP. But that's by the by. Uh, the fact that single player is actually getting a look in at the moment means that um, if they've got time to actually put attention to the single player stuff, Maybe we are finally moving towards the end of all of the new content and we might actually start seeing more fixes rather than new features. I have to wait and see. Who knows? All right, and that brings us to the end and my final thoughts on the Season 10 roadmap. Uh, at this stage, like I like what I'm reading in here in the fact that it's a nice concise list of the things that they're going to try and achieve in Season 10, uh, but I would love to know how many items of new content are left to go before they end early access because once we know that they've actually finished releasing their new content we will know that they're on to optimization and fixes and i think a lot of people would love to know so if you were able to basically obviously it's a like how long is a piece of string but if you know that like oh they've just released the modular ships they've just released the trading system we now know they've only got 10 items left to go before they actually move on to fixing stuff you know to give people a bit of a you know they can judge for themselves basically where the company's up to and maybe the company doesn't want that but it would at least give people a little bit more peace of mind knowing where the end line is uh, and that's really what i would love to see so this roadmap is good but i would also love to see the roadmap to the end of early access Anyway, my name's Skavig. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed me reading out these uh, notes in the dulcet tone of my Australian accent. Uh, make sure you subscribe to see more, uh, like the video and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one.